once proposed to be the tallest building in Europe, the Millennium Tower in London, was born from the ashes of terrorism, where on the site of what was once the grade-listed Baltic Exchange would rise a 92-story skyscraper that would tower over the streets of the ancient city, at the heart of one of the most influential financial districts in the world, but ultimately failed to go beyond the concept stage due to various impracticalities and the fact that the project was simply decades ahead of its time. The site onto which the Millennium Tower was proposed to be built was originally the historic Baltic Exchange, or 24-28 St. Mary Axe, in the heart of London's ancient city. The Baltic Exchange being a market for shipping, marine insurance and information on maritime transportation that had been established in 1744, with the exchange's premises having been built in 1903 by architect Smith and Wimble, and came to pass as a cathedral-like structure with great columns, a gigantic inner atrium, and its most notable facet, a gigantic dome comprising several stained glass windows that once stood over the main staircase of the building, and was the product of English artist John Dudley Forsyth during 1922. However, the Baltic Exchange, despite having been awarded a Grade 2 preservation listing by English Heritage, fell victim to the terrorist campaign of the Provisional IRA on April 10, 1992, when a one-ton bomb hidden inside a large white truck was detonated outside its front door at 9.20am, the largest bomb to be exploded on British soil since the end of World War II. The ensuing chaos resulting in the deaths of three people, 91 injuries, and the devastation of the Baltic Exchange building with its front facade of columns partially collapsing and the interior of the structure being heavily damaged. Although surprisingly, the ornate and fragile stained glass dome of the building escaped with only minor damage and was carefully dismantled piece by piece before being restored and erected at the National Maritime Museum in Greenwich, East London. Though plans were originally made to rebuild the structure, the Baltic Exchange Company, following the start of restoration, quickly found that the damage to the site was far worse than had been originally appraised and with their limited funds not being able to see refurbishment of the building back to a usable state, English Heritage approved the Baltic Exchange's request to sell off the site to property developer Trafalgar House in 1995, although English Heritage itself would retain ownership of the heavily damaged building as a grade-listed structure until such time that the landowners could undertake new development on the site that would justify demolition of the historic trading hall, their main hope being that Trafalgar House may be inclined to rebuild the Baltic Exchange in its original manner. Instead, Trafalgar House, looking to the future, announced on September 10, 1996, that in place of the former Baltic Exchange would rise a 1,296-foot skyscraper housing 92 floors, with the bid for designing the structure eventually being won by Sir Norman Foster and his Foster & Partners architectural firm, which beat out competitors Jean Nouvel, KPF, GMW Partnership, and Sir Michael Hopkins, Foster envisaging a highly unorthodox floor layout that comprised two asymmetrical ellipses joined at one end abandoning the more conventional use of a single central core by having two cores rising the length of the tower that equally supported the floor plates between each other, as well as housing the elevator shafts that would be served by double-deck elevator cars, the building, unlike later designs, not tapering as it rose, and thus meant its half-acre of usable floor space remained unchanged from the lobby to the 92nd floor, with up to 10,000 people expected to work inside the tower, equating to 27,100 square feet of trading space per floor. Under Foster's proposal, the tower would provide office space up to the 85th floor, granting a total of 1.8 million square feet of usable trading area, above which would be a luxury hotel, 40 apartments with a communal sky garden, and an indoor restaurant and observation deck located on the 92nd floor, while in order to reduce the potential for swaying caused by the high winds of the often turbulent British weather, a 600-ton tuned mass damper would be positioned at the top of the building, a device commonly used in skyscrapers located in earthquake zones, such as the later Taipei 101 skyscraper in Taiwan, Trafalgar House estimating that construction of the building would cost £400 million and would require a workforce of 1,500 people to bring to fruition. The tower expected to include more than 30,000 tons of structural steel, 10,000 tons of reinforcement, and 65,000 cubic meters of concrete that would be supported by 65-meter-deep pile formations. Work on the building being proposed to start from 1997 with a view to topping out the skyscraper in time for the millennium in 2000, while occupation by the first tenants would take place in the summer of 2001. Had the structure met its 2001 opening date, the resultant Millennium Tower would have achieved multiple accolades based on its height. Being the tallest building in the UK, dwarfing both the tallest skyscraper, the 770-foot One Canada Square in Canary Wharf, and the tallest freestanding structure, the 1047-foot Emily Moore Transmitting Tower outside Huddersfield in Yorkshire, 
while also being the tallest building in Europe by overtaking the 850-foot Comets Bank Tower in Frankfurt, and the sixth tallest building in the world behind the Petronas Twin Towers of Kuala Lumpur at 1,483 feet, the Sears Tower in Chicago at 1,451 feet, and the Twin Towers of the World Trade Center in New York at 1,368 and 1,362 feet respectively, and as of 2023, would be the 42nd tallest building in the world between the 1,316-foot Guiyong International Finance Center in Guiyong and the 1,288-foot China Resources Tower in Shenzhen, funding for the building to be provided by various city banks, who would ultimately become tenants of the skyscraper once it opened for business. However, before any work could be done, the proposal to build such a mammoth skyscraper in the heart of London's ancient city was met with near-universal hostility and backlash by the national press and various other organisations, with the Guardian newspaper famously describing the building as an erotic gherkin, while English Heritage, owners of the damaged remains of the original Baltic Exchange building, were early supporters of the scheme, despite their demand that a 100-metre or 330-foot height ceiling be imposed within the City of London for all new buildings being constructed within one square mile of the former Baltic Exchange building. Trafalgar House Managing Director Alan Winter, stating that even if consultation with the Planning Committee of Central London disapproved the scheme, he would appeal instead to the Environmental Department of John Prescott within the UK government, the incumbent Labour cabinet recognising the tower's strategic importance for the city, and hoped that, much like the controversial Lloyds Building of 1986, the planning application could be pushed through as a matter of national importance without the need for public inquiry. Eventually, the entire scheme would be struck down by the British Airports Authority, or BAA, the operators of London's Heathrow, Gatwick and Stansted airports, who expressed severe concerns as to the creation of a near 1,300-foot skyscraper in the historic city of London that was in direct alignment with the approach paths for runways 27 left and 27 right at Heathrow Airport. As while air traffic approaching Heathrow is usually routed to the south of the city across the South Bank, away from the skyscrapers of Canary Wharf and the Financial District, BAA stated that, based on the often foggy and poor weather conditions in central London, a real possibility existed of a commercial airliner accidentally crashing into the tower, and with this overriding safety issue placing a heavy layer of doubt on the entire project, English Heritage withdrew their support and denied Trafalgar House the right to demolish the original Baltic Exchange building ownership of the site subsequently being relinquished to Swiss RE, who proposed a more scaled-back project in place of the gigantic Millennium Tower, while English Heritage, following extensive photographic records being made of the many delicate masonry columns and sculptures inside the trading hall, dismantled the Baltic Exchange brick by brick throughout the course of 1997, leaving a vacant plot of land in the heart of one of the world's busiest and most important financial districts. In a manner somewhat evocative of the Guardian newspaper's appraisal of the Millennium Tower, what would eventually rise on the site of the Baltic Exchange would be the 41-floor 30 St. Mary Axe, known originally as the Swiss RE building, that was completed in December 2003, the building being the product of Sir Norman Foster and the Arab Group, who created a 591-foot-tall skyscraper of a rounded structure that has since been affectionately dubbed the Gherkin, and would ultimately win the 2003 Emporis Skyscraper Award for Best Design, while in terms of super-tall skyscrapers in central London, this wouldn't be fulfilled until the creation of the 1,016-foot shard on the south side of the Thames at London Bridge Station on the site of what was formerly the 24-storey Southwark Towers, and provide 72 habitable floors across which are spread a mixture of offices, apartments, a Shangri-La luxury hotel, and an observation deck, the shard being the brainchild of Italian architect Renzo Piano, and upon its opening in July 2012, became the tallest skyscraper in the UK sparking a building spree that saw dozens of other office towers be constructed on both sides of the Thames, which all sported unconventional styling techniques so as to set them apart from one another. In the end, while the Millennium Tower would never come to pass when proposed during the mid-1990s, the building's failure to go beyond the concept stage eventually proved that it was a project way ahead of its time, as had such a building been proposed in the modern era, in light of the latest skyscraper building trend within the historic city of London, the potential exists that the tower may have truly been constructed as an enormous monolith that looked down upon its rivals, but instead ended up being a brief fling with the notion of bringing super-tall skyscrapers in the same manner as the United States and Europe to the ancient streets of the British capital. <laughs>